Hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde, welcome to EFA165 on this Thursday, September 3rd. Today I'm going to talk about lifestyling, uh, intermittent fasting lifestyle, just lifestyling as a couple. And uh, I want to introduce my beautiful wife Liz. And, and, and uh, I've, asked, I've asked my wife to join us today. 52% uh, of my listeners are, are, are women. And uh, the reason why I, wanna, I brought her on today is because one of the radio shows I was listening to the other night, they had conversations on couples that fight over diet, diet lifestyles, etc. And it, even as far as divorce, there's actually people that wrote in and called in, etc. And they were talking about how they divorced over this um, lifestyle and, and not necessarily this lifestyle, but any diet lifestyle. So I asked my wife today to join me. And uh, when I when I looked at that, that, that conversation the other day, and I was telling them that my wife at night, Liz, that it's a form of control. When I look at, when I was listening to the radio uh, station and, and they were talking and the hosts were talking and a lot of the women or men were calling when they started looking good, uh, the, the other spouse kind of <laughs> pulled Real back, right? reeled them in, exactly, right? That's a form of control and or uh, the other spouse is 100% on, the other, the other spouse is not, they're cheating and dirty diets and that kind of stuff, right? So a lot of the fights ensued. I talked to my wife, maybe because we're older, I'm 54, right? And then uh, when I started this lifestyle on June 3rd, I had told uh, my wife that prior to, this is where I'm going, right? This is the, this is the, uh, the, the lifestyle I'm going into. This is what I've researched intrinsically, etc. cetera. And uh, I'm going to say that uh, our life experience together, we've done, and I, I don't want to name brands and, and titles out there, but we've done ketosis type diets together. Mm -hmm. We've done juicing together. Uh, we've trained together you've even done competition yeah so as a woman like you, you ended up on stage you uh i remember we were, i was sitting down i was typing away at night watching a movie working away and my wife turns around and says i think i'm going to compete in uh i want to compete in, so the that's, fitness in the fitness competition yeah. i said oh that's good so I'm, this is like january and i was typing away and she goes yeah i just signed myself up it's in three months <laughs> i said well you better start training next morning you were downstairs in the gym training so as a woman and I remember you, your, your, your meals and how you were eating, how you were yeah. cooking, and you found that hard on you. Yeah, um, in terms of my um, digestion, I think it was really hard. Um, I ate a lot of meat. I'm a vegetarian now, so that changed obviously after. But I think it changed, it changed for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons it changed is because of the digestive issues that I feel that I got from that hardcore um, diet that you have to have when you're when you're training to get on to a show and do a show but I mean many people do it I I came off of it after I had done it for I think a year plus um, I came off of that and I started eating the way I used to eat before without really um, going slowly into the food that I was eating before and that really um, messed with my digestive system I find so now I fast and I've been fasting for over a year and I find that I can pretty much eat what I want to eat without putting weight um, unlike you I haven't necessarily lost a lot of ton of weight I've lost eight pounds in diet in not dieting sorry but in fasting um, but I find that what it does for me the fasting is uh, it gives you great skin it um, get, keeps your stomach flat it takes away any kind of bloating, any kind of digestive issues that I used to experience before. I find I don't have them. Um, so that's what I like about the fasting and that's what I like about doing that versus other types of diets and other types of things that we've tried to do in the past, which we've been successful at, but we've also gone back to what we want to eat, right? And, 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 and that reason behind that is because it's non-realistic. So. Yeah. And you'll hear the expert that 80% of it is in a the kitchen. They're right. <laughs> the big bulk of it is what you consume and what you do every day, right? And when my wife talked about that, that when she ended up on stage in three months, think about it. I mean ripped in three months. That proves right there that 80% of it is in the kitchen because the way she lived, it was a very, very, very regimented, very religious process of eating and that it shredded her in three months. I mean ripped but it wasn't realistic and two she felt the consequences of that right mm -hmm. the the other thing when i when i tell my wife about this and all the lifestyle it's what you do every day right and you have to enjoy what you're going to do and if you look at my mission statement on my uh, my facebook uh, public page i talk about that i chose a life 
that when I went intrinsically into this lifestyle, when I looked at it and I researched it and I based myself on the six group, the centennials that live the longest on earth, and I also based myself on those that lost 100 pounds and more and never put it back on. And I'm talking 10 years later, five years later, never put it back on. That's what I based myself for on. And I also said to myself, it has to be something realistic that I'm gonna enjoy every day. I don't wanna feel penalized. I don't wanna feel punished. Mm. I don't wanna feel blah, right? And I found it <laughs> and it was fasting. And when I look at our daughters and, and Maddie's gonna be 15 now, Madeline and then uh, Eva is 13, they're 18 months apart. I look how sporty they are. I look how uh, the agility they have. I look at their, 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 their tall, slim um, bodies that they have. And I'm gonna attribute that to you in the sense that what you prepare for them every day. Because from birth, I remember you making puree and the stuff that my daughters ate, <laughs> they watched this video growing up, and I know you tell them that, some of the healthiest and healthiest of dense nutrient food that you would grind up and puree up and feed them as children, but you would add a banana, you would add some, some an apple or something to make it sweet, uh, but you, you, you fed them that way for their entire life. Even though if we go into the pantry, even though if you go into the, the fridge and that, there's a big box, everything in there also, they had nutrient dense meals every single day of their life going to school with that they still have their snack their children they still mm -hmm. enjoy their, their, their stuff but every single day what do you do every day and that's what counts right and i just mentioned the pantry and all that in our house and a lot of couples when i go back to the original conversation here about the couples and fighting and that i took over a space of our house which caused I, a little bit of a fight it, it you know <laughs> it, it, it was hard because i went into and my wife will tell you it's her kitchen right and <laughs> i will <laughs> and a lot of the cultured women will tell you it's their kitchen like to try to try to step into a, a grandmother's kitchen for an italian or a hispanic okay, well, not and, a grandma but <laughs> yeah. yeah no but i mean like an italian woman or, yeah, or a, a i Spanish like my woman. things where they are correct and and i and in my organized chaos i know where things are so when she said her organized chaos she, it's her it was her pantry and her house. i took over sections we have a couple of sections in our house. I took over a whole section of the pantry on one side. I took over a whole section of the pantry on another side. I actually put a section in the fridge and a section in the freezer. The reason why I did that is because what I explained to them, it's I, I you know when you use your phone and you have portrait and your the portrait only focuses on a subject and completely blurs your, everything around it? That's how I see now. I literally look at food as fuel. And I, I, you go into phases when you do uh, intermittent fasting. And my wife says she lost eight pounds, but if, if, I'm not gonna talk about the fat loss, but I'm talking about the medical side also. I've lost 110 pounds. And what's gonna happen, she's gonna keep losing weight, but the fat loss is an, an, is a, is an absolute. And this is in the uh, England Journal of Medicine. It's also in a lot of the longevity study, uh, aging study researches, government funded, government sanctions, government involved uh, organizations now are just came out in December and January. There's a lot of them coming out. Governments are saying and that, that that fasting actually is a huge preventative of cancer. It talks about it talks about obesity. It talks about all the medical conditions tied to it that that fasting assists with or dissipates from. And this is why when I, I tell my wife, you know, her her father had Alzheimer, her uncle had Alzheimer, mm -hmm. and I like and, and there's a proven fact out there that Alzheimer. They really believe that today, the latest, latest in technology, we know more about the body in the last 10 years or the last 5,000 years. They say that's what you're subjected to, what your daily environment is, your epigenomes, that kind of stuff, and what you consume. The big bulk of everything, and remember, your brain only absorbs 25% of 100% that of what is brought to it. And out of that 25% that it absorbs, it only absorbs nutrient dense, right? So when you look at what you do every day, what you consume every day, et cetera, sorry, the water, uh, that's what's important, right? So when I'm gonna go back to our daughters, I'm gonna go back to the pantry. The reason why I did the pantry is because I don't wanna be searching. I don't wanna be looking. And that's why I explained to them, I don't wanna be going through bags and boxes to find my stuff. So I made it when my life is easy in the sense that I walk in the house, I know my pantry, I know where all my health, everything's health, it's right there. And I don't have to search for it, I don't have to look for it, it's easy. And also in preparing food, right, and that kind of stuff, it makes mm -hmm. it much more easy. So that section of the house was very important for me based on knowledge, based on uh, on everything that I've been researching, intrinsically I knew where I was going. Um, well, you're also somebody that doesn't like to waste, right? So um, doing that allowed you to make sure that, you know, because make sure that we use it before it goes to waste, right? Before it hits its expiry date. So I think that's important too, because a lot of times when things are stuck in the back pantry or wherever they might be, as healthy as they are for you, if they're not there in front of your face, you're more inclined 
um, to reach for something else because you don't see this other healthy alternative and then you miss that expire, expiry date too, right? Absolutely, and, and then... And then <laughs> and you know, you're big on that. <laughs> I am big on that because I, like, you're constantly throwing things out that are expired a year, two years and fully sealed and all that. Well, but it's less, also, less and less now. <laughs> let, let, let's, my, my point to that, it was access, right? Yeah. Visual access to sections and that I wanted to live by. And then I'm gonna go into the food, right? like when I'm talking about food here, konjac. Konjac is a plant. It's the, some people call it shiritake noodle. It's a plant and that, that comes from Japan. I guess the Asians have been uh, eating it for almost 2,000 years. It's all fiber, zero calories. The one I use, I'm gonna plug it, it's called Miracle Noodles. The reason why I use that one, it was from Review. Number two, they have like a, a, a shiritake noodle that's in uh, Fedrachini Angel Hair. Uh, great review, zero calories, all fiber, extremely healthy for you. It fills you up, mm -hmm. would you agree? Oh, 100%. I just made some yesterday and um, our kids eat it, they like it. It really is how you make it, right? It, it can be pretty terrible if you don't make it right. If we, and I think get, that's if we can get into that because uh, I, a lot of people ask me, I try the contract noodle, I hate it and that kind of stuff. And my wife will make me different meals like the, the, the spicy Asian meals, the, uh, the, the traditional uh, meatball uh, pasta sauce meals, uh, soups and chilies and that kind of stuff. But it comes packed in water, it's a plant. It comes packed in water and it has that watery, uh, like ocean smell or a fishy smell. It has a very and, fishy smell. Correct. Yeah. So if you want to explain how you prepare it, because it's important because I still eat my pastas. People will see that I still eat my pasta. I still enjoy my, my Mediterranean Italian restaurants uh, with real food and that kind of stuff. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I that's when I eat my pastas for the most part or on Sundays and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But throughout the week, what I do every day, how do you prepare the konjac noodle? So you have to wash it really well first. So I, I put it into a... Um, Strainer. A strainer, thank you. And uh, I rinse it really, really well. I actually sometimes scrub the noodles a bit because uh, under the water, just to get that smell out. And you will notice that the smell is gone. You will notice it right away as soon as you do that. You just do that one, you know, two, three minutes and you're good. Um, then I like to, depending on how I'm making it, I don't measure anything when I cook, as you know, so I don't, I don't follow recipes and stuff like that. So depending what I want to create, if I want uh, something with a wine sauce, if I want something with, um, uh, spicy because you like spicy it really depends what I want to make if I want something vegetarian or if I want something with meat for you guys um, then I like to put all that stuff in first including my spices if I can get my herbs out of our garden then I do that and add all of those things in first let that kind of lightly cook just a bit if you're doing vegetables and um, I like to then throw in those noodles or the rice depending if I'm doing the rice um, right in and simmer that for two to three minutes. You don't need a lot of time because if you go too much, then it ta it, it can be very rubbery, the texture of it, um, which you don't want, right? That takes mm -hmm. away from the taste. Um, so I just do two, three minutes and it gives it that flavor and um, it really comes out quite nice. And, and, and I, I could attest to it. I, first of all, I'm not a picky guy. <laughs> My mother loved me and you'll say the same thing. Yes. I, I eat everything, um, but if but our listen, kids are, they are, are and kids. if they eat it, then then it's got to be pretty good. <laughs> no, that's a, that's, a, that's a good t uh, testament of that because that's true, right? Our, our daughters eat it, and when my, you hear my wife say, a lot of the ingredients she puts in first, she, she adds the she adds the konjac noodles uh, at, at the last four or five minutes of the meal to absorb the sauces and all that, and that's why she does it that way so it doesn't become all soggy. Now. But also, if you listen to her when she's saying the meal she was preparing and then getting the food out of the garden, that kind of stuff, and the, and the spices all real food <laughs> real ingredient nutrient dense and mm -hmm. when she said also about the contract plant it also comes in rice format it comes in a ziti format and comes in a different format so it's excellent to add right it's like mm -hmm. you're adding rice to a soup or adding but it's actually all fiber it's actually zero calorie it's actually full of nutrients there's so much information on that on the contract plant the sherry tacky noodle and so uh, oh, another uh, way to do it sometimes too just to I just when you said that about the rice is that Instapot that we have. Love it. Love that the Instapot. That was fantastic. So I bought an Instapot. This is how I got involved in the kitchen. I bought an Instapot. Yeah. I bought an ice cream maker. Like we, we, we make our own chocolate gelato. We make our own ice cream here. The Instapot, she loves it. Love it. Fantastic yeah. reviews. Like, like, by like thousands of their reviews. And when I bought it, it was because of a, a female friend of mine in the Toronto area told me, try the, try the rice, the shiritake rice in a pressure cooker. So yeah. you've done a lot of the meals in the pressure. It's a pressure cooker, like nine in one. Yeah. Up. No, it's fantastic. And the the rice um, that I did in that just the, the other day, it was a uh, vegetarian 
uh, vegetable fried rice, like a yeah. kind of like an Asian flavor to it. And it was fantastic. It had maybe, um, I don't know, four ingredients at most, all natural stuff, all vegetables. And then I put in those, those, um, the little rice that you get from the, that, uh, what's it called? Shari yeah, shirataki. shirataki. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it was fantastic. It was really it, good. It was fantastic. So like Liz, a moment ago, she said that she lost eight pounds. Right. And I said, losing the fat, what, what happens is it, it brings your body down to what it's supposed to be. <laughs> and one of the analogies I use for people, imagine you're in a construction company and your lumber keeps getting delivered and it's raining today and your, your, your framing crew's not there, but the lumber keeps getting delivered. And the next day is a Saturday and a Sunday and a Monday morning, the framing crew's still raining, they haven't showed up, but the lumber crew could keep deliver, delivering lumber piles up, right? That's what happens to our body. If your, your crew, that, that 16 hours, fasting is 16 hours, I'm gonna, let's call it no, no eating window and your calorie window. In your no eating window, non-calorie, that's your water, that's your sparkling water, that's your coffees, that's your espresso, that's your green teas, anything non-calorie. Even your flavor sparkling water is out there that, 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 that there's so many different varieties of them that have no calories. I don't do artificial, artificial flavors in that. I do some of them, which I'll get into another podcast, but the, the reason why I don't do them is because it spikes up your body, tricks your body, and that kind of stuff. So that's why I stay natural, as natural can be, but I love my sparkling waters, my green teas, my espressos, my coffees, and all that stuff. So those are the things you consume as much as you want during your non-calorie windows. During your eating windows, I people that follow my podcast know that I'm a nomad, uh, six, days, uh, six days a week average nomad, which is one meal a day. I average 23 hours of fasting every day, which is all liquids and non-calories. And then I got a one hour east eating window and I take my time. And I and I made it a thing in March. I told my wife and I and my daughters, I eat once a day. I want to make it count. I want nutrient dense all the time, obviously. But I want to sit down as a family. I want to sit down and converse and as much as we can. But you know, with soccer and I, the non-COVID world has opened up. Now there's all these sports and kind of, so there's times that we cannot. However, when I arrive and, and my, my family's there and if they already eat and they'll sit down with me and that kind of stuff or vice versa, I'll do the same, right? But it was important to me to do that because make your meals count, right? Make them count, make them nutrient dense. If you want more focus, if you want more energy, if you want a better quality of life, longevity wise, again, New England Journal of Medicine, there's longevity studies out there, medical studies. There's studies that go back 100 years, 70 years, 50 years on the thousands and thousands of people with data, with everything, right? But now government's starting to pay attention government is trying to advise of it that yes it is helping medically it is helping with fat and those are the things the autophagy and I, and I wanted to make this a medical one but i wanted to get a woman's perspective on this and when she mentioned a month ago she lost eight pounds you know you, you, you're, you're going to continue losing weight and that's natural and women and men are different uh, uh, metabolically and etc but it's the other stuff it's the alzheimer the dementia the parkinson the diabetes the the gut health the uh, irritable bowel, all these things that they know that fasting dissipates and disappears with, right? When you follow this lifestyle. And this is where I talk about longevity. If my heart's gonna stop at 60, stop at 80, stop at 100, so be it. Well, what if I have, can have a long, long, if, if it stops at 80, what if, what if it can be disease free for 80 years? What if it can be disease free for 100 years? And that's what they know. And that's what the research says. And it's as old as time itself. So when I look at, when you have your government officials now starting to talk about it, we know that it's healthy. We're living proof. I've lost 110 pounds. You would say, and you're, you're right now, and, and it goes up and down. It could drop and, and it keeps going. Like I, people ask me, how much weight are you going to lose? I'm not looking to lose weight, mm -hmm. right? I'm looking to lose, uh, to live a healthy lifestyle. Losing the fat and, and going down to your natural body, that's a bonus, right? But what I'm doing it for is longevity. And, and my daughter had told me in, in uh, if you follow my podcast, she had clipped this thing on my bag. It's almost two years ago now. And it was, it was during my birthday. And she told me that she wanted me to walk her down the aisle. Right. And at that time mm -hmm. I was probably 350 pounds. I fluctuate between 330 and 350. But at that time I was probably 350. She clipped this Superman tag, which I still have in my business bag. And she said that she wanted me to be around to walk her down the aisle. So it wasn't just about the fat, right? It's about the mind. It's about the heart. It's about the soul. It's about everything to be around, to be productive, to be to be a meaningful part of somebody's life. I lost a mother to, uh, to Alzheimer, uh, not sorry, Alzheimer, to, to do uh, to ALS, and she had cancer within the ALS, and her last seven years on earth were horrible. The devil himself, right? And if I look at, you know, and if I look at your dad, hardworking individual, productive man, brought a whole family from Uruguay to Canada, 
like amazing, right? Started all over. And he did that to have his last, how many years of his life with so Alzheimer? Probably four or yeah. so, four yeah. or five you know, years. Four, like, your yeah. last five years, and, and, and the, the, the process started before that, mm -hmm. but your last five years of your life, right? You worked that hard. And that's why I tell my business friends, and that's why I tell those I love and respect, right? Why do we work so hard? So we can be six or 60s, 70s, and 80s? Think about that for a second. So I think coming back to your original start, which was supporting each other, um, I think I would just say that that's really important. I think we've always supported each other that way when it comes to whatever we choose to um, find the balance. Yeah, to you know, to eat and to be healthy and, and so forth. And there's been times that you've been more on the ball with that than I have, and there's been times that I have more than you have. And I think just really um, not dictating to each other. I think that helps. And, and, and that's a good point of when we're closing here. And, and what I what I want to add, like I'm very blessed to have a wife. I come home, like I, I, those that know me, I manage a lot of things. And I come home to a fully prepared meal. Like I mean, like nice meal uh, with, with entrees and desserts. And, and I eat a real meal. Like if you look at me, I feast, right? Mm -hmm. And people will say that, you eat all that? You lost 110 pounds? Yeah, and yeah. I still drink wine and everything, right? But it's all yeah. about the sugars. Sometimes and I'm pretty shocked how much you eat. <laughs> it's true, but it's it's obviously working. It's working because yeah. it, 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 I'm, I'm the proof in the pudding, right? Yeah. So, but it's it's working medically also. My blood results and that kind of stuff, physically, mentally, etc. So I, I feed. But my point to that is, it's a nutrient dense meal, and I don't eat it all if I don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. I, because I have entrees, because I have dessert, because I have a few different things: my cheese, my meats, my charcuterie, and that kind of stuff. And, and and I know I'm going to have all this. So sometimes I don't eat it all. Sometimes I, but I I I, I feast on everything, right? I make it count. I make it fun. I love my life that way. It's it's realistic. It's easy to follow. Mm -hmm. More focus, more clarity. Um, you, you would attest that. Like, is it hard? Like, you can drop me off anywhere in the world. You can drop me off anywhere in the world. You can eat like pretty much. You're a vegetarian, and you yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, it's totally doable anywhere. anywhere. Very easy. And and you can adjust it, right? If if your schedule changes and you can't do twenty hours fasting today, well then you do eighteen or you do sixteen. You do what you can, but the point is to do what you can and to get started, right? And the key is sixteen hours. Always remember yeah. six, half of that you're sleeping, right? You do sixteen hours. Uh, you it's do not it. hard. It's you you're not hungry. I excuse me, I don't feel I'm hungry ever. Uh in fact I, I find that I get full on smaller amount of food now and I just don't wanna continue to eat. Um, and I don't starve myself. I don't feel that way at all. I don't feel lethargic. Um, you know, I'm very go, 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 as you know, and I, I feel great on it, honestly, eating, eating, but I also eat what I want to eat, right? Like I, and I know you eat what you want to eat. You eat way less processed, almost no processed versus me. I, I sometimes still dive into that stuff, but, um, and maybe that's why I've only lost eight pounds, but, <laughs> but that said, I, I still feel that it's really good for the mind. I feel that it's good, healthy, healthy wise for your for your body to regenerate itself, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, which I'm sure you've talked about umpteen times, but yeah, that's that's some of the reasons that I do it. And and, and my wife said, like, I, I don't do process, I don't do sugars, that kind of stuff, and that's why I lost 110 pounds, most likely. And the process, but you eat nutrient dense, and, and what you said a moment ago, the reason why you're not hungry. Is because you eat nutrient dense, mm -hmm. right? And that's why. And that right there, anecdotally, she's not hungry. Anecdotally, I'm not hungry because I. I you think you're hungry? Just drink a bottle of sparkling water. You're not hungry. Trust me. Shit. Yeah. The, the gurgling and all that—that's your system working. <laughs> that's your that's your crew getting rid of the lumber, right? They're working. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. So anecdotally, she's right. You're not hungry. You're satisfied. You're fulfilled. It's because she eats nutrient dense. It's because I eat nutrient dense. That's why we're not hungry. That I understand what empty calories are and that kind of stuff. So. In closing, we're going back to the beginning. It's about the support, right? It's about the understanding. And why would you not want your other half, your better half, yeah. the, the, especially the parents of your children, to be as fit and as functional and as productive and as mentally, physically, emotionally healthy as possible? Why would you want to stop that? Right. If I if I yeah. was to think about that, so I've always been supportive that way. Yeah. You're very supportive, obviously, because you prepare things. And even though the struggles of the pantry, we still we made it work. Yeah, and, and, and you make it work, right? My point is, make it easy, make it a lifestyle. What you do every day, that's what counts. If you want more focus, if you want more agility in your mm -hmm. life, if you want health in your life, if you want longevity in your life, you want to be active till you're 80 and 90, right? The the the, the formula is there. It's it's as old as time itself. 
Jean Guy and Liz, anything else in closing? No, um, just I guess I would say that I'm blessed too. Thank That's you. all. Thank you. I, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Jean Guy and Liz on EFA 165, wishing each and every one of you a most beautiful and productive week and weekend ahead of you. Thank you. Merci.